I think uh, your example about the school, yeah, I saw that in the press. Um, it's, it's everything that I'm talking about. The reason why it's so beneath the surface is because we don't talk about it. We don't address it. We never go near this topic. So therefore, these limiting beliefs are ingrained in us without ever being properly challenged. And what I would say about that school, so I've, one of the things I've been doing a lot is going to companies and corporations to work with them um, on their diversity <coughs> um, and also uh, with uh, uh, universities as well. And I think actually what the school should have done was twofold, because you can do it one way. You can do just the diversity piece, which is bodies. So you have people of color in, you have more women, you have more disabled people, blah, 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 blah. But then you don't do the inclusion piece, which is you don't look at company culture or the culture of that school. And you don't prepare people that are there already for change. And I think it's so important, that, which is why it's so important that we have this conversation, because you can't just do one bit without doing the other piece, because that's when you get the incident that you're talking about here. And now that young boy is probably scarred for life. Um, and also, the, uh, the, the perpetrators of that, I mean, they were kids at the end of the day. And actually, that's where adults probably could have prevented that outcome with preparation ahead of time because we never go there, we don't have these conversations and it's really important that we don't just do the diversity piece, we also do the inclusion piece. Now this is your second point about um, feeling with feeling the minority, the majority of the time in your life and not actually wanting to bring that into your social circle. I would, I would challenge that and say, I don't know if you have children, I don't, I don't know what your situation is, but I'm sure you have young people in your life that you care about. And we have to, we have to move beyond our comfort zone. We have to, because we have to try and make it better for that next generation. So if I take my parents as an example, you know, my parents did not have an easy time when they first came here. It was not easy for them at all. But actually, that sacrifice, that pushing through, that putting themselves in situations that were uncomfortable for them, meant that there were opportunities that were available to me, for me, that weren't available for them. And so I think the only way things change long term is by getting uncomfortable. And it does mean it has to happen from both sides. But it also does mean a level of authenticity. So often what happens is if you are the minority, you suppress who you are and you only bring part of yourself to work or you only bring part of yourself to a situation where you are that minority. And I would, and it's not easy, but I would challenge that you bring all of yourself to be able to be an agent of change. So I totally get where you're coming from, but I would, I would challenge you on that. So that we can move I think forward. Just, yeah, I mean, I we I do that anyway. Yes. But I just feel like um, I am spending maybe seventy percent of my time yes. with uncomfortability anyway. Yes. So I'd like to keep the thirty <laughs> percent. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Thank you very much well, can, indeed. Well, could we make you maybe do keep you keep twenty percent? How about that? <laughs>